delicate point eh, because the arrogant ones they should despair you understand the tyrants Allah is not going to show mercy to them but the sinner he should not despair you think ever tyrant ones arrogant ones they're going to say I'm a sinner no by definition their word is there they are arrogant they will never say they do wrong things they will never say uh, they are arrogant they will not put their head down and to ask for forgiveness sincerely saying I am like this and I am like that uh, maybe sometimes you may say to yourself you may say quiet in the dua but if somebody tells you why are you being arrogant you are this you are that you see that one who is a pussycat he becomes a lion that I'm trying to defend himself yes so if there is nobody telling you how you are how are you going to improve how are you going to improve just by sitting praying going up and down reading Quran every day how are you going to improve that is not going to make you to improve because Allah could have just sent down the Quran and the orders to everyone but he sent down a guide the Holy Prophet ﷺ was a guide is still a guide guiding us not only ritual doing what up and down this and that which we have to do but inside of that we have to become obedient good servants don't you see aren't we going to learn from the Ahlul Kitab no one can be holding on to the Sharia of Allah like this or like that I'm saying <laughs> then the Bani Israel keeping the Sharia of Allah saying this is very important as well but when Isa salam was sent to them to bring spirituality which is tariqat mm -hmm. to say yes you are worshiping you are doing everything but what about the dirty characteristics that you have you are hiding it behind the clothes that you wear you are hiding it behind your recitation you are hiding it behind all your worship but you know and Allah knows how are you going to get rid of all those dirty characteristics Isa salam was sent to them to teach them about their dirty characteristics they didn't like that they ran to kill him so now Prophet والسلام, he was not just someone who is going to tell you pray fast go to Hajj he was someone who is guiding us guiding us so the one who does not guide he is not going to know how he is something is wrong with your car go read the books and the manuals to see what is wrong with your car and tell me this is what it is something is wrong with your car simple what do you do you bring it to a mechanic you bring it to someone who has knowledge of that car you're driving that car you love that car maybe you are reading so much about the car too you may have some knowledge but that one is a specialist correct one, two three all your reading will go to trash can that time he says it's because of this because of that because you have banana in the tailpipe maybe <laughs> not because of you thinking about something else so there is a specialist that guide is a specialist because everyone you ask them when they're in a good mood they say yes 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 I'm a bad one I'm a bad servant when they're in a good mood I'm saying when they're in a bad mood if you say to them you're a bad servant you are arrogant you are angry you are this or that oh watch how they explode that time but how are you going to know yourself if you don't have a guide to tell you you know your own body you live in your body yet you go to a doctor mm -hmm. to tell you what is inside the sinner does not despair from the mercy of Allah but the arrogant ones and the tyrants they despair because Allah will not show mercy to them as Allah says in so many ayats unless they turn around 
And if you are supporting the arrogant ones and the zalims, their uh, smell will get to you. So now, belonging to tariqat, it is not for us to say, oh, I pray so much, I do zikr so much, I'm not this, I'm not that. Especially in this jamaat, more you have to say, this sohbat is for me because I have arrogance. That's why it is being reminded to me. I have to remind. So I have to watch myself. So that time, you're going to a mechanic, and the mechanic is going to tell you, look, the gauge come out like that. You still don't know what is wrong with the engine. But drive like this. Don't drive like this. Put this. And Tariqat is teaching you through small things. If you're sitting down and you're occupying a space that your brother can sit down and you don't look around to see whether he needs a space, who doesn't need a space, you are being a Zalim. If you are eating, food comes to you and you're not passing it over to another person to make sure that everyone has, you have those qualities too. It is not just to speak nicely with words. I'm saying sometimes people, they are very gruff, but they are the most kind people. They make sure everyone has things to do, uh, things that they need, and they will go out of their way without asking anyone for thanks to fix something to make sure that people are comfortable. Well, this is what you need to do. Mm. So, when you become familiar with each other, As the khutbah is saying, there will be more love. The Turks, the Ottomans, they have a b nicer way of saying it. Much more. Makes sense also. Very wise. Where there is activity, where there is activity, where there is action, there is work. Where there is harakat, there is barakat. There is blessing. Where there is activity that you're doing, work that you're doing, then there is blessings. Where there's harakat, there's barakat. And then when there's barakat, there's what? Muhabbat. Where there is barakat, there's going to be muhabbat. You start loving each other. And when there is muhabbat, when you start loving each other, then the rahmat of Allah will reign. Modern people, they will take it backwards. They want to have fun with each other, hoping the Rahmat is going to fall. Without any work that they're doing together, without building up relationship with each other. So they're okay for today. They say, hi, how are you? Tomorrow, if somebody says something to them, they get very hurt and they don't speak to that person. They get disturbed, they don't speak to that person because there's nothing that is binding. The Ummat used to have a lot of harakat used to have a lot of action. There is a mission for the whole Ummat. There is a mission for the Sultan. There is a mis mission for his generals. There is a mission for the Padishahs. There is a mission for the governors. There is a mission for the families. Everyone is looking to see how we are going to spread now. This of the Prophet. How, if we are not spreading, how are we going to defend it? They were busy. Now, we are busy. In the month of Ramadan, we're busy with eating and drinking. To just listen to hear some words of advice, some sohbat, oh, say, please, we already fasted today. Please, don't push me so hard. I fasted, okay, today. I've got to go and read some Quran. If it's not reaching past your throat, then what good is it? And what is it that the awliya Allah and our shaykh that we are speaking that is other than the teachings of the Prophet and the teachings of the Quran? This is what sohbat is. What are we teaching you? How to become better in this dunya? How to run after your ego? We are trying to learn. Now, the mechanic is saying, these things you do, it will be very good for your car. These things you do, you will have some problems. The guide is doing that too, in the sohbat. These things you do, it is good for you. You'll win dunya and ahirah. These things that you do is no good for you. You will lose. It is up to you now. Mechanic is going to say it's up to you. He's not going to put your hand 
to take the uh, premium gas to put inside? No. So Tarikat, it is up to you. You take it, you win for yourself. That's why we see people who came maybe yesterday, they make so much progress because they're so thirsty and they take the teachings and they put it in their lives. But maybe some people who are here for years and years and years, they're not taking anything, they're not putting into their lives, they don't make any progress. So if any says, 20 years sitting, you didn't make two steps in Tariqat. Everything is a test. Your happiness is a test, this is a test. Everything we do, we must remember Allah. If in your happiness you forget Allah, not too good. If in your sadness you forget Allah, we must remember Allah. Be with people who are going to remind you as much as you can. Inshallah, that time, this month of Ramadan, we will learn something. We're not just going through some ritual every year doing the same thing. For the sinner, there is no despair from the mercy of Allah. To get the mercy of Allah, we must first say, Yes, Ya Rabbi, I am a sinner. I did this, Ya Rabbi. To make sure that you are more sincere with that, find a guide who is going to tell you these are the qualities that you have that will lead you to sin. If not, one minute you're crying, saying, Ya Rabbi, forgive me, and you feel so good. Next minute, somebody pokes you one side, you become angry, you become stubborn, Everything is cancelled, lost again. May Allah forgive me and bless you, inshallah. May we find the blessings of this Ramazan. May Ramazan not come to us on the day of judgment to be a witness to against us. Amen. May this Ramazan be a good witness for us. Ya Rabbi, we are your weak creatures. We are your most dirty creatures. Make us to become clean, Ya Rabbi. Amen. Make us to become useful for you. Amen. Forgive us, Ya Rabbi. Amen. For the sake of the Holy Prophet, alayhi to salam and your beloved ones, El Fatiha. Amen. Assalamu alaikum.